In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this report, which analyzes Amazon reviews for an Apple iPhone. We're going to go through its different features, and I'm also going to explain the process behind how and why I built it like this so that you can build something similar for yourself. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So as part of a community challenge set by Pomeral Partners for March 2023, I created a report that tries to analyze if customers are generally satisfied with Apple's new iPhone. So I was given with a data set of about 5,000 reviews with a combination of different uh, review titles, free texts, and five star ratings. And with that information, I created a report using the different techniques that I covered in this channel. So if you've not had a chance to play around with it yet, I'll leave a link to the interactive version in the description box below. So first, let's go through the different features of this report. This is the report that I have currently open, which you will be able to access from the description, as I mentioned, and it has a few pages of an analysis. So the first page is the summary page, which sort of gives an overview and answers the main question here in this page, which generally says that customers are generally satisfied with the product, as well as some general information like what is the distribution for customer rate reviews by different star ratings. So we then have the review page, which lets you see individual reviews. As you can see here, you can use different sorting methods like sorting by most recent or sorting by most discussed. You can also filter this by looking for any reviews that mention certain uh, keywords or maybe even filter different star ratings if you'd like. History here shows overall stats of how this sentiment or you know this rating changes over time. So things like understanding the volumes of the reviews. So understanding the volumes of the reviews right here, the average rating and how that's changed over time. And Obviously, you're able to cross filter like you would in a normal Power BI report to kind of analyze and see how kind of different perspectives look like across all of these different visuals. And the idea with this cross filtering as well is that even though without cross filtering, you have some information or some analysis that I've added, if you needed to dive deeper, you can make those selections as you need and it will filter out the report for you. The sentiments page uses built-in AI insights to sort of generate key phrases that uh, can determine sort of what low rated uh, reviews are saying basically. It shows five star ratings based on certain keywords that found on those review tech. And we also try to analyze the sort of helpful score at the bottom here. So trying to understand how the distribution looks like for those reviews that have been upvoted the most um, based on customer reviews. And that's basically the reports. There's lots of features integrated into this report. So let's go and break down some of the most interesting ones. So first of all, let's have a look at the design here. So a lot of the uh, static elements in this report, as you can see, for example, here in the summary page, um, is actually not visuals or uh, shapes as part of the report, but it's actually part of the background. And we do this to reduce the number of visuals that we have on the screen. That removes the need for Power BI to load these visuals every time you open up the report, which makes the loading process faster for Power BI. So for the background design, I used uh, Canva, which is basically a graphics design website. And um, you can use other tools too. Like for example, I started with PowerPoint here to kind of plan out how I'm going to build the different elements in the report. But the tool that you use is not too important. The key thing that I found is that, you know, by using backgrounds, it allowed me to create sort of different shapes and designs that normally you would be restricted to if you only used the shapes within a Power BI report. So next, let's move on to the reviews page, which um, as I showed you, it lets you sort of um, see a list of reviews in a list format here. And there's lots of sort of small tricks happening here in this page. So the first thing is uh, obviously this bit here is just a simple table. It doesn't look like a table because it doesn't have headers, as you can see. But uh, if we go to the uh, Power BI report uh, on the desktop here, you can see if I just make a selection here, 
you will see that it's a simple uh, table report. We just did some tricks to hide the column headers by just making it the same color as the background, which is white, so you can't really see it. Another thing that we did is, um, as you can see, like you normally, when you have tables that are a certain width bigger than the kind of visual container, you would have this horizontal bar at the bottom. And you, here you can see it's not there. And that's because we put this, um, this shape on top of the visual container and that sort of prevents the users from accidentally going to the right where basically they shouldn't um, need to and the reason for that is uh, is because we have a few extra columns that we've added here and that sort of makes the magic happen uh, for our buttons and our selections here at the top so first let's look at the actual writing here so the format of these reviews kind of follows the same format as what you would see in amazon i've tried to kind of copy the format as much as possible but um, there's a lot of limitations when using formatted text texts in uh, table format so I can't change things like text size or text color individually and I wanted to keep this table element so that you're able to kind of filter or sort like you would so it was a bit of a trade-off but how I formatted it like this is using combinations of sort of unichars which if I show you here so this is the code for it so for every single row I created unichars to create those line breaks in between and um, all the dynamic elements like the star ratings, the titles, and the values are all set up here in this one measure. The next thing that we have in this table is this sorting uh, value. So this sorting is what controls the sorting we choose here in our sort table. So it changes what the value in this table depending on what is selection is being made in this sort dropdown, which normally you would only be using in sort of filter context. So you will be filtering a table, but instead that in this case, I found a way to use sort of disconnected tables to you know, control how our tables are sorted. And how we do that is obviously, first of all, by swapping what the values are based on what the selection is. So this is the, the disconnected table. Um, and then these are the values that we want to change to. So if you wanted most recent, I wanted to um, get the dates instead, or helpful counts or total comments. And what we have, um, you can't really see it, but uh, we have a hidden uh, column here, which is always sorted descending. So that way, every time the value changes, the sorting element changes based on your selection, which automatically sorts the table as you'd normally expect. Uh, the next thing is the keyword search. Now, this one um, was actually a pretty simple implementation. So I'm talking about this part where we're able to select uh, reviews that mention certain things. Now, this one, as you can see, this list is just a, a list that I pre-created. I didn't want to pull it out from sort of the AI insights because I always want them to stay the same. And I wanted to mimic how Amazon uh, kind of reviews work when you're looking for reviews. You sometimes have this option to uh, select certain keywords that you might want to filter or what's most relevant. So you can click that and then it will filter the reports for you. So if you click that, for example, it will kind of filter which reviews you're seeing here in our table. Another thing, if you didn't notice, is that you have, um, we're, we're utilizing subtitles now, which is a feature that came out uh, not so long ago. And this one is a dynamic title that essentially just gets a count of how many reviews we have based on the selections that we've created. So if I show you how it's written, here we are. Yeah. So this is the, the calculation. So first it checks if there's any selection being made because I didn't want it to show anything if there are no selections being made. So if I hit clear filters here, you'll see it disappears. But as soon as you make a selection like battery, for example, it will um, show up how many are there. I um, mean, I forgot to show you how the read reviews mention work. Um, so it's a simple, so you can see we've applied, if I select the table here, it checks if the search uh, measure is blank and the search measure is basically a, I think it's this one is keyword search. So what it does is it combines the title and the body and it tries to search for the certain phrase that we've selected from our slicer menu. And based on that selection, it gives a one value on the row or blank. Um, and then this filter pane here on the right hand side decides if it needs to show that row or not. So in this case, whenever you make a selection, it will only always show the ones that you have made a selection of. 
if there is a selection being made. So we have an if else selection here, which basically says that if there is nothing selected, you should just show everything. So that's how that works. So next is the history. And there's lots of kind of few interesting things happening here. So first is that the calculations that we make here and the groupings that we've created sort of follows the best practices models and uh, that I would normally kind of preach whenever I create sort of, you know, best practices videos in this channel. So here, for example, we have a visual that highlights the top values from this uh, selection based on what is currently in context. So at the moment we have October and November, which is highlighted because they are the sort of the, the highest volume months. But as you can see, if I make a selection for different years, for example, whatever is highlighted also changes because that content or, or, or that logic is dynamic and it always is based on the context of what you're selecting. The colors in the report, if you haven't noticed yet, is lifted directly from the Amazon site. So what I did is I simply took screenshots of different parts of uh, the Amazon site and then I copied the hex code for all of those different elements so that I can integrate them as part of the design either here on our background so in Canva or within our Power BI report so um, these colors is something that I picked out from the site and um, to make it easy for me what I've done is I've put it in a theme so you can customize your theme here. So all of these are kind of different colors, uh, which I integrate here and there in this report. And it allows me to kind of, anytime I need to create new tables or charts, it will automatically try to use these colors, which makes my development process a lot faster. The next thing that you probably have noticed is these uh, star ratings values in these tables. So this is actually an SVG trick that I covered recently. And it's a technique that I lifted of actually someone's uh, work had full of data. So kudos to them for um, showing this, uh, this trick. I'll leave a link to their blog post in the description box below. If you also haven't noticed, we have page tooltips on uh, some of these visuals. And if you don't know how page tooltips work, they're actually very simple to implement. Um, I did cover it um, in a previous video uh, recently, and it gives kind of more context to the different charts if you needed to get more information about them. Like for example, um, here, um, I added an average rating, a star rating here as a page tooltip because I thought it would be interesting to know for uh, the month that you're highlighting, what is the distribution of those star ratings to see like if you have a lot of volumes, you know, what is the distribution of those volumes? Is it like mostly five stars or mostly three stars? Uh, you'll notice at the top as well. So we have the your typical card visuals and we use some basic color formatting. You can be fancy with this, but for me, I just uh, use the, the color formatting that uh, is normally available in Power BI and uh, using the sort of uh, ranges within it. So you can see that in the conditional formatting in the callout value. So here is what decides what that color should be dynamically. So although it shows 4.5, obviously, as you know, because we've implemented the, you know, the cross filtering in this report, if you make selections like uh, years, for example, that changes based on those uh, on those selections. So if I change it probably to, to one star, you'll see um, those colors changes accordingly, not just for the average rating, but also for the sentiment score. Lastly is the sentiment page. Now there are lots of sort of good analysis here. Um, and lots of cool techniques that I've employed. So first of all, and, and you saw this in the previous uh, page as well, we have this table formatting and these gray areas, a way to kind of group these different parts of the tables together. And this one is, is pretty simple. You just need to go to uh, cell elements, uh, I think specific column actually, and you're able to control what the background colors are, not just for the values of your tables, but also for its headers or its totals. So it kind of can create some element or some grouping, which uh, you can use to, you know, make and present your data better in a table format. You will see that there's also some dividers here, um, which is not something that you can natively add in a table. But what I've done is uh, I've added these blank visuals, uh, blank measures to create a kind of a divider in between these uh, these columns so that you can make that grouping even more prominent. And uh, this blank 
value, as you can see, is just it's essentially a blank measure. It's just like a column that we can add and resize accordingly to kind of make that spacing happen. So now let's go and have a look at the back end and see how this uh, model looks like. So in the model itself, the uh, you know the, we have a few uh, dimension tables. We have the review table, which is the main table which we use for and we imported into the report. But we have other bits here which we use to to help visualize the report following best practices, of course. And let's go to Power Query, which is probably what you're all interested in because I implemented AI insights here, which first creates a sentiment score and then second uh, generates sort of key phrases, which you saw on the sentiment page, analyzes the sentiments and the average rating for, um, for, for those different keywords or key phrases. So if we focus on the review uh, facts table here, that's basically where where it happens. Uh, let me just hide all of these. Um, so here, as you can see, we are leveraging sort of AI functions to generate a, a score for us out of 100. And this is something that you can implement fairly easily in Power BI. So under add columns, you will have this section AI insights. So when it's finished uh, loading this step, you'll be able to select between text analytics. Well, actually text analytics is the main one that I used because it, it has both the sentiment score and the key phrases tagging, but you have other bits here, which uh, I'll try to cover in a different video. But how to use this is you simply click it. Okay, we'll just add in a new column here just to show you how it looks like, but you simply select which function you want to use and then which column you want to use it against. So for example, if you wanted to create a score sentiment, you choose which column in your table you want to base the sentiment on. So in this case, we have the body, which will be the review text, and then it will create the score for you pretty easy and you didn't really have to do anything, anything else. The only catch is that uh, this works only if you have premium subscription. So it's not something that you can use if you only have a pro, which most of you guys will probably have. So, so just bear in mind that you won't be able to use it if you don't have a premium capacity. The other one that I created is the key phrases, which again is the same thing. All you do is you feed it the free text uh, column that you want to get the key phrases from and then it generates a list of different key phrases that it extracts from those free texts, which you can kind of link back to, uh, to your report. Uh, one thing that I found when I was uh, using these AI functions in Power BI is that every time I hit the refresh button, obviously because it needs to send that data to the cloud to get back the sentiments for this challenge, because the data set doesn't really change, we don't really need to, you know, re-query those uh, keywords or key phrases because the sentiments and the key phrases will stay the same because it's it's static so we don't really need to keep refreshing that so um i just simply to make it faster for me during the development process i just went and disabled uh, the load for this fact table so you will see this is disabled and you also see that although we have extract key phrases here as a function if you look at my dimensions i've simply just copied the results of my initial key phrases AI uh, results. And then I plugged it into an Excel sheet and then kind of linked it back to the reviews table. So that way it doesn't take too long every time I hit the refresh button. And that's really it for this video. Now there are lots of really interesting things that are happening in this report. And I didn't really cover everything because a lot of them are sort of quite basic or something that I've already covered in this channel. So I've covered just the niche ones that I thought everyone was kind of interested to, to know. But if you think that I missed something and you'd like me to elaborate more, leave a comment below so that I know um, and then maybe I can create a new video or just answer you um, in the comment section below. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.